All right, just wanted to talk a little bit about um, lust and love addiction and uh, obsessive behavior and uh, the mechanisms of the ego. Um, it also ties in with the, the other, one of the, an, another major addictive force apart from lust is greed. You know, and there's a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of greed going on around um, with, the, uh, with Bitcoin at the moment. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I used to work in the stock market and uh, looking at various market cycles and the hysteria of uh, bubbles is also quite, quite an interesting thing and the psychology of investing. But I want to talk a little, a little bit more about lust at the moment. And uh, <laughs> so the thing with, 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 with addiction like I'll talk, uh, you know, all addiction is, is the same, is, has got similar hallmarks. Mm -hmm. Like, um, now, I go to these 12-step fellowships, and, and this is, a, I think, a lot of people relate to this with the alcoholics, you know, is that they often don't feel that great, they feel disconnected, and when they have their first glass of alcohol, they start to feel connected, they start to feel like they're their they're true selves, they can really connect to people, be happy, talk to people. All that fear and anxiety and that feeling of not wanting to connect or isolate disappears. As soon as they get this, this fix, this bit of alcohol in their system. And uh, so that, that's like a chemical addiction, you've got drugs and alcohol. And I'll tie it into the, to the lust addictions, but here's, here's the great mechanism. Now, the, the thing with um, these energies of addiction, um, that's right, they're always about getting something. You know, there's an endless need to get something for a fix. And what, whatever you get is never enough. It can never sustain you. So if you're an alcoholic, i.e. you're disconnected from uh, the higher vibrations of the sunlight of the spirit or a conscious contact with God, you have your first drink of alcohol and you get this, this hit this high, this feeling of being connected, of being happy. But then it wears off, that's the problem. You have the one glass of alcohol, but then eventually it wears off, and then you start to feel disconnected again. And then, of course, now you're, you've become an addict, because you, you're hardwired and your ego tells you, you need another one. So, okay, well, last time I had a glass of alcohol, I just felt great. So then you end up taking another drink. And then again you feel great. And that further entrenches the addiction. Now the thing um, with addiction, and especially for people who go into 12-step fellowships, is we always say that it's, it's a progressive illness. And actually the hits that you got right at the start become less and less over time. So in the early days, like you'd have a, you know, um, a glass of alcohol and maybe you'd be blissful for maybe like half a day. But later on, after a few years, you drink your glass of alcohol and it's only like for, for a minute. And then a few more years later, it's just for one second. But you're hardwired to keep going back now for that hit, you know. And then later on, even with addiction, when it gets grim, you keep doing it and there's no hit. And, but you still ha end up doing it over and over again, drinking the alcohol and not even feeling happy any longer, but you can't even stop it any longer. So that, that, that then becomes a torment. So the energy, of, the energy of, of addiction is that this insatiable craving to get something. And with addiction, whenever you get the thing that you want, you get, to, usually in the beginning stages of addiction, you get a temporary relief. So with alcohol, you know, you just, you're feeling good, you get the alcohol, and then you start to feel bad, it wears off, then you need another glass of alcohol. Exactly, and actually there isn't any amount of alcohol that can ever fill it up when you're in the field of addiction. Is just is just a never-ending field which can not, is unfillable. Now that that correlates exactly the same with love addiction and codependency. Now in love addiction and codependency, I mean it just depends how your ego has framed the hit in how you get your. It's like a little dopamine hit, a little thing. Like when you have your alcohol, you get a bit of a dopamine hit. When you have your cocaine, you have a bit of a dopamine hit. Now, with, um, with love addiction or codependency, I mean, the hits are just in how your, your head has framed it, who the person is or what the behavior is. 
and how, how you do it. But again, remember, in the field of addiction, or this field of craving or desire, it's an endless energy. There will never be enough, but you become hardwired into doing these things over and over again to get what's in the early days a huge hit, which becomes less and less of a hit later on. So love addiction can be like meeting a person. You know, you're, you know, you're looking forward to them, you're obsessed about them, you're, you're waiting for the time you're going to meet them on a date. Then you meet them and suddenly you get this rush. Suddenly you feel alive, you know, there's electricity coursing down your veins. You feel so ecstatically happy. And then, and then they're gone. And then again you're obsessed now. When's the next time you're going to meet them? Exactly the same as alcohol and drugs, you know, there's no difference. You start ringing them up, you know, maybe we can meet a bit sooner. You know, we don't have to wait till next week. Because already you're like, you want to get that fix. Now, often when people go, when there's a breakup, or let's say there's a, you know, the, the partner's done something and, and, and you know, you know you've, you've, there has to have been a breakup for whatever reason, it's like you're still wired for the addiction. You still want your hit, but now it's like the energy field will just morph into something else, so it can constantly get its hit. So it's like maybe it's not going to be meeting them, but it could be like checking their Facebook page to see a picture of them. You know, even though you don't like them, you, st you still end up doing it. You're just going back and back, and you're still getting some mm -hmm. kind of like hit. Or even if you're end stage addiction, you're not getting a hit, but you can't stop yourself from doing it. It's like back and back, and there's not even a little hit. You know, that's, that's getting near to end stage addiction. And then you, you might get a spiritual mentor that says, well, stop, stop checking Facebook, you know, because you're just doing this obsessive thing, trying to get something out of that thing. And then you could, that could morph into something else. You know, it could morph into, if it's not going to be Facebook, I'm going to like look through my old texts and read them you know, just to read them, you know, because I'm not looking at the picture, but you start doing that obsessively. So it just keeps transferring. And you're still in this energy, and uh, it's like, even though your rational mind is saying you shouldn't do those things, or someone else is telling you, then you're just, it's just the energy field of constantly, I give me, give me, give me, and just going back and back and back. And he here's the thing with uh, uh, what r one of the spiritual teachers, Ramana Maharishi and Muji said, you see, when you're obsessed, whenever you have obsession for something, it's often addiction. Because you're obsessed to get the thing that will give you the hit. You see, that's the... So, and actually, when you're in obsession, it means that you will get a hit from the thing. That's how it works, you see. If you're obsessed about winning the lottery, when you win the lottery, you'll get a massive e ecstasy rush. If, if it's... Um, I've forgotten the recent guy, but you know, in the olden days it used to be George Clooney, if you're a girl, you know. I think there's a new one. Brian Gosling. Brian Gosling, thank you, <laughs> someone reminded me. Uh, so nowadays, you know, it feels like, you know, if I could only get, if I could get a date with Ryan Gosling, you'd be obsessed by that. And it's that obsession which means gives you the hit, you see. And that repeated thought or action, you're building up what's called the attachment or the addictive energy, so that and that, what you don't realize is when you're in obsession, you're actually spiritually disconnected. You're actually in a state of suffering. Because obsession is like, I'm not at peace right now. I need to get this thing to feel happier. Yeah, to get a hit. So whenever you've got an obsession, you're creating an attachment. So it's kind of an anti-truth. It's like, if you're connected to God or to peace or serenity, there'd be a place of infinite trust, peace, the universe is going to take care of everything. I mean, everything is provided for in this moment. There is no need to be an obsession about a future object that's going to fix you. So obsession immediately means that you're disconnected from the truth. And, the, and the, when you're disconnected, if you keep doing the action of disconnection, you get more disconnected. So if you're, if you're an obsession and you allow the obsession and, or the action of the obsession, like to keep checking Facebook over and over again, you're actually decreasing your spiritual vibration. And what it will mean if you're an early stage addiction is that you'll get big hits, you know. You'll see the picture of the boyfriend, you'll get a rush, 
but then you start to not feel good again. So back on. Or maybe you'll need a different picture. Maybe there's an, a nice picture on LinkedIn. Uh, there could be one on Twitter or something. You know, you start, start trying to get these different hits because the picture on Facebook isn't quite the right picture. I need to get a better picture of, of Ryan Gosling or whatever it is, you see. So, so you keep doing it, or it just morphs into... So you can keep getting the hits in a different variation to try and get the juice out of it. But you're going, your ego is inflating even more, and, and they, it never works. And eventually these hits stop working, and you keep doing them. That's like insanity uh, at the mm. end, and it can take you to death, you see. So it doesn't really matter, but it's the action. And the thing to realize is that if you're an obsession, you're not connected to God. And if you, if you do an action with the obsession, if you allow the thoughts to keep going, that's increasing the addiction and the disconnection. And if there's an action on it, that will even further action. Like, if you're obsessed with alcohol or, or Ryan Gosling non-stop, there's, really, there's no difference. Addiction is addiction. Alcohol... But if you just allow that addiction, that obsession to go on, you become more and more disconnected. But if you, know, but if you allow the obsession to go on, you will be drinking eventually. Because you know, the obsession will gain such a strong attachment that you'll buy the alcohol. And if it's Ryan Gosling, I don't know, you'd probably track him down to where he lives and start stalking him. And, uh, you know, and, and start sending him mail every day or whatever it is. You wouldn't be able to stop yourself, you know. Like, I'm the perfect person for you, and we're right for each other, and you should leave your wife and kids and <laughs> come with me, kind of thing. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, it gets quite disorientating. So, but then, you see, then you're getting bigger hits. You're trying to get bigger hits, and you're going down the rabbit hole. Mm. So the only way out of it is to go in the opposite direction. And actually, when you cease... First of all, if you're doing act gross actions, like drinking alcohol or checking Facebook, or buying flights to find out wherever Ryan Gosling is and going off there. Those are big actions, so those are not even mental. You're now taking gross actions in, in, in the world. So you want to stop those. Those would be the first line of stopping addiction. Like stop che checking Facebook, stop booking the flight to, to America. I, don't, I guess he lives in America. Holly, I guess he lives in Hollywood probably somewhere there. So stop looking up the flights to, to Hollywood. So that would be the gross thing. The next level would be like stop, you know, your thoughts constantly in constant obsession. Now you've stopped the actions, that's good, first step. But then you've got to start to detach from your constantly allowing yourself to be in constant non-stop obsession about Ryan Gosling. You know, the lust of Ryan Gosling. So, or it could be greed of cryptocurrencies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just use that as an example for what's going, going on. Right. I'm not saying every, everyone's in greed, but I'd say there's a lot of greed going on right now in crypto. I'm not, the, you know, I mean, in the stock market, there's a lot of greed. It doesn't mean every investor is greedy, but uh, there are, when there's a bubble, there tends to be a lot more greed around. So, uh, so that's like... Uh, anyway, back to, to lust. So first is stopping the gross actions and don't switch to, you know... F don't, you know, is... is if, you know, if you think like, I oh, better stop Facebook and then start checking Twitter all the time to find different pictures, that's equally still the same thing, really. Or if it, even if it's Twitter, to just reading the old text, that would still be reinforcing. And, and these are actions outside, so the behaviours, they're not just thoughts now. Then you want to let go of the thoughts. Then what will happen is, because l lust or this energy of addiction or desire or greed, you know, is that um, it would be like you won't be getting your dopamine hits regularly. So you have this huge withdrawal. And there will be constant thoughts, now go back. Either think about it repetitively or do the actions to get a thing. But you, you want to like reverse that. So you want to go through the withdrawal. And actually, here's the thing, you know, because you've got to understand that obsession is actually suffering. And, and actually the hits will never work because the hits will stop working eventually. So, hence you want to go through the energy and, not, and stop the actions first, and then stop trying to stop yourself going over and over in those thoughts. And then you'll have this kind of, it's called a withdrawal, it can be like agony. You know, it's like, you know, if you tell an alcoholic, like, stop drinking today, you tell someone who's been obsessed by Ryan Gosling and checking 
check, trying to you know go through the internet and get every single Ryan Gosling photo, your picture, you can stick it on your wall. Just tell them like no more Ryan Gosling. It's going to be like there's going to be like you know emotions arising from wanting to get another either a mental hit or action hit out of it. So you go through that, and then what you realize is when all that stuff is gone, when you threw the withdrawal, is you'll be connected to a happiness and a peace. See, when you got the when you get the Ryan Gosling hit, or, or the handbag hit, or the alcohol hit, or whatever it is, George Clooney hit, is you're you're getting a sense of peace and happiness and connection that you'd automatically get if you're connected to your to your spirit all the time. So you're not losing out anything by going through withdrawal. It's just that it's an illusion that a person or a thought or an activity can give you what's already here now. So when you go through the withdrawal, it's like you're going to be in endless happiness and connection and peace and bliss and love, but you won't need to do the obsessive thoughts or the obsessive actions to get a temporary hit. Yeah. So you just you just you just do that, and uh, or if you're in active addiction, twelve-step fellowships and sponsors are often a good thing to do, or a therapist or you know a coach or go join a spiritual group or something, so you get uh, group support or mental support with that to help you go through. Otherwise, your head will go will rationalize why you should just keep going back to the person, um, you know, and uh, or rationalize why you should go into alcohol, or rationalize why you should keep going back doing something which, which won't fulfill you. So, um, any questions? We're, we're, we're recording at the moment, but are any questions on camera? No? Okay.